So like the LGBTQ side, like, you know, to someone who is queer, like that's like, oh my gosh, I feel seen. But to Andrew, he was like, yeah, that felt very natural that I was expecting a kiss at the end of the series. Like that was very like just smooth and like um, the, the sibling rivalry, it felt, it feels very natural and not forced and not just like real. Someone who really has a sibling really wrote that <laughs> somewhere. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The writing and the, the, writing the comedic and the timing in particular is just so spot on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the first things like, I noticed. Like you were saying, so she's like having women that are like multi-layered, like also is like a big hit for me because like she could have just been the evil mean witch. Yeah. The cool outfit and the cool long black hair. Like she's hot. It could yeah. have just been that, but it's not. So like, thank God, let's keep writing and bringing those characters to life, please. So that's I why I love that. <laughs> well, I don't know if you remember uh, the Bechdel test. Have you guys ever heard of the Bechdel test? Yes. 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 What I love is that it, it just it just passes in so many so many flying colors, mm -hmm. um, and you know that's the kind of media I want to consume anymore because I don't. It, we've seen all the other stuff done a thousand yeah, times. Yeah, it needs to be. Standard. Yeah, we, we've read that book. We we want something new. <laughs> and you're still we've getting that anyway. For anyone who would be mad about the diversity, you're still getting plenty of that anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, guess, like, see, the thing is, like, I'm watching the show from not a kid's perspective. Like, I'm an adult and I'm like, oh, that's like a really deep, uh, like, how do children watch this? Because, like, mine are terrified like, of it. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, yeah. why are you the bad guy? And I'm like, well, well, find life's out. complicated. <laughs> There's some layers yeah. to that. I'm not quite a bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Probably involved trauma. <laughs> do they ever get into a show and then find out that you're in it and be like oh it's just mom again <laughs> not yet um not yet. there was a show that i did a couple years ago called um little big awesome that was really sweet and uh it was just a show about friendship and it was it was really sweet but they um i don't think they they were too young i think to really understand that i was the voice of the anthropomorphic nail file um so <laughs> <laughs> right on but, resume yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, uh, Where do you see yourself in five years? I'm uh, an oh. anthropomorphic nail file. Running the inconvenience store. Mm -hmm. uh. um, but uh, yeah, no, it's it. It hasn't really hit home yet, which mm -hmm. is fun because uh, I. So somebody sent me a bunch of um, Funko boxes for the Kaguya Otsutsuki character, and so I was um, signing those today, and they were like, ah. What are you doing? Are you done yet? Why is this all over the table? And I'm like, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> You're gonna think this is cool. Trust me. Yeah. A couple years. You just wait. Uh, whatever. It's fine. But yeah, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I guess for me with the Owl House, the reason it drew me, I, I talked a bit about it when we spoke back in August, but at that time I had only watched the first episode, and. For me, it was just the it was the sense of humor, and that's that's usually what draws me to a lot of it. Now, sense of humor alone, like Driana said, like it it's fine if it's a bunch of slapstick stuff, but if it doesn't have heart, it's not going to hook me. So the humor drew me in, and then the heart hooked me. And the sense of humor is generally like what usually brings me into stuff, unless it's something that it tweaks that like really stereotypical 80s action flick thing that I always I'm always looking to get give me any Sylvester Stallone movie I love it but at the same time when it's not that surface level kind of fluff it has to be something deeper to get me into it and Owl House has that in spades I, I was thinking about uh, the episode where um loose finally doesn't she gets in she gets into the academy uh, gets into the school and she finally doesn't have to uh she doesn't have to pick her one coven to join, you know, like she can choose any one. And that kind of spoke to me before. I don't know how the, the show shifts to be more to have an LGBTQ character towards the end. I guess that's in the last three episodes that I haven't seen yet, but I thought about it right then and there because each of the characters who were part of the detention course uh suddenly chose two different paths and it was something totally different in the back of my mind i was like i wonder if that's a metaphor for lgbtq communities because there's these four kids who are out of the norm and they're kind of choosing two or three different things versus from this whole spectrum of 
choices. So it was, I, when I saw that, I kind of started analyzing that's one of the reasons I stayed on it. And it's not, not just because it's promoting something that is good, but it's, it's the fact that there's something deeper there, something more than just Rambo running through. Uh, I, perfect. If we're going to stick with the Rambo metaphor, it's the difference between Rambo one and the newest one. Rambo one's talking about severe PTSD of Vietnam vets and a guy have, going through a mental psychological break. And the fourth one's just a guy running through and beating the shit out of people. Right. Love right. both of them, but for different reasons. Yeah. I, I think he, doesn't he only kill like one person in the first movie? No, he kills a lot. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I thought there was, I remember hearing well, that. Cause... Maybe not. He maims a lot. He does a lot of maiming in that first movie. <laughs> yeah. Cause like you said, it's all just about, the, the PTSD and like horrors and dangers of war. And then by the end, it's just like chain gun, <laughs> like throwing machetes. I always love the, the, from the fourth Rambo, they, there's a clip of Stallone with a machine gun and he's like, got this really ugly face going on and they Photoshop the gun out. The gun so it looks away. like he's just giving thumbs up. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite Photoshop. That started. Ever. Yeah. That started a Photoshop trend where it's like, you take an action hero and you Photoshop like thumbs oh up God. instead of guns. <laughs> you guys seen the one of uh guitar players with giant slugs <laughs> <laughs> yeah i have not seen that one no I, I, you've never it's seen like, that what? oh it's so like, good with this like giant slug <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i, I have to look that, that up now it's so funny it's fantastic please do please add that to your list of things <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah guitar players well, just like i'm looking at the this. slug memes right now and i am not disappointed <laughs> um you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> thank you no i i it, it's interesting too like watching kids medium how much violence there is you know I, it, watching it from the perspective of like i'm a mom um i don't really want my kids to be like oh i'm mad at somebody i should go beat them up like i don't want that to be knee-jerk reaction and that is knee-jerk reaction in so many shows is fighting and it's a very american thing i feel yeah. like because in in japan i think andrew Gerano, we've talked about this like like just you know in our casual conversations where america is much more okay with violence than sex oh japan God. is much more okay with sex than violence the other way around yeah um it's a very and to an extreme there's some pretty fucked up shit that you can find in in japan um <laughs> But like America on the other end is just so infatuated with violence. And like, I mean, perfect example, they weren't meant for kids when they came out, but they're shown to kids now Looney Tunes cartoons. I love them. Like I adore Looney Tunes, but they're very, I mean, generally kids can tell like this is ridiculous and over the top and slapstick. So it's not necessarily, I would assume they're not just going to go out and start be like putting dynamite in kids mouths and stuff like that kids aren't just gonna drop anvils on top of our know, heads. Yeah. but at the same time it is a weird thing where violence is significantly more accepted than than anything else it's very interesting and that's why i like sh shows like shiro or Owl house that are more thought-provoking like are really good for like the next generation like if a, there is an evil bad character who does evil bad things and hurt people it's not it's no long it's becoming no longer just they're evil they're bad they want to hurt people it becomes like here's their backstory it's like oh my gosh that makes so much sense here's their still don't still don't do that <laughs> be redeemed <laughs> and learn it's like avatar. yeah i mean like, it's like exactly avatar like look yeah. at prince Zuko. like yeah. boom you know mm -hmm. i love that Even universe yeah his whole shtick is redeeming villains he's giving goku a run for his money for for villains that have turned friends in that series <laughs> but i mean like again bringing the 3d characters to life you know it's it, telling a story about figuring out a person's flaws and then finding out how to lift them up what's not to love yeah yeah and what's it's funny because that essentially is normally the formula for any you know oscar nominated movie you know any uh, like, <laughs> god, god I can't, i'm sorry i'm punchy <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it it's but yeah no i mean redemption is the number one thing and you know that's why all the like you know reformed nazis always <laughs> always win the academy awards it's like oh they were bad but now they're good <laughs> there you go here's here's a show now they're ex-nazis which means they're okay Judge at Nuremberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a 
slightly personal question that's not actually personal at all um i just want to make sure coming from the source itself and not just wikipedia is your birthday february 13th is your birthday february 13th my birthday is february. no way <laughs> 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 birthday twins yeah i'm probably much older than you but that's okay yeah it's um it's a it's it, it's kind of made valentine's day a little bit of a wash <laughs> all right so <laughs> here's the thing Driana and I's uh, anniversary is uh, our dating anniversary is uh, January 28th. So then a couple weeks later, <laughs> within the same week, Driana's birthday, the hey, 11th. Birthday. 11. <laughs> Two days later, mine the 13th, the next day, Valentine's Day, and then the nothing, nothing the rest the for the rest of the year. I guess our, our wedding anniversary now is September, <laughs> but like from February to September is just like we get it all out of the, at Christmas. Like we, we, we go broke at the beginning of the year because it's like Christmas and anniversary and birthdays. And, but we're just kind of like, we'll just do it all at once. Birth and Times Day, birth, <laughs> birth <laughs> miss, whatever you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, it's it's funny. Some of my very best friends have always been either between February 10th and 17th and April 12th and 15th. I've got like Weird. six or seven yeah. friends within that, like I'm just sorry. out of that sorry, April Josh. range. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. So happy, uh, happy Aquarian uh, almost birthday. Happy Aquarian. Yeah, it's coming now up. we definitely have to send her a shirt. Photoshop oh, yeah. that logo on there. Happy birthday. I'll send you my. <laughs> I will. That's my, my day job is a graphic designer, so I can certainly do that. So really, yeah. So actually, technically, because I wear many hats in my job, I am also a professional voice actor. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Just because I didn't um, even know that. Well, I do. I only say that out of a technicality and, and necessity, I guess. So um, I do graphic design work. I do video editing. I do voiceover. So like whenever. It basically it ended up that I would do crazy voices around the office and people would be like, hey, we can actually use that for something. So I've done a lot of like a lot of local businesses. Like we have uh, uh, one of our bigger clients is like an opera house. And when that was still going on, um, I would be the guy that would be like, the Fulton Theater proudly presents. Like just the smarmy <laughs> like announcer voice or right. I, I almost awesome. have enough for like a demo reel that I could put out there, which you know, people tell me all the time to get into voice acting. So that's <laughs> really cool. I've thought about it. I, I would love to be in that creative aspect of, of, of that world, but I also would love to do a logo for a, you know, a Marvel movie or something, but right. It's that, that's going to be more, uh, more constant work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will and... tell you for anybody who is interested in getting into voiceover, there is a website called, I want to be a voice actor.com. Yeah. Uh, D Bradley, Bradley Baker. Baker started it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's like one of the workingest men in voiceover and he put everything into that website. So it's, it's chock-a-block of, of great information. And Yuri and his wife, Tara, also wrote a book. So nice. read that one too. I imagine the audio book for that is a little more effective than reading the book <laughs> due to the nature of the content. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say Driana's being modest right now too. She's actually an illustrator and has done a lot of amazing work. Uh, she did my emotes for my Twitch and we're actually in talks of doing shirts for the podcast when I can afford shirts for the podcast. But yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah now I you saw some of your drawings. Yeah. Two, uh, two children's books. So like me and Andrew are kind of a duo. I draw the pictures and he adds the tags. <laughs> what are they? Yeah. So, um, I'm still working on getting them on Amazon, but uh, one's called Let's Be Safe, uh, which was, that was a commissioned book, so that wasn't quite mine. But um, the second one was called Hood, which is a modern retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. So it's done in a digital watercolor style. So like, it's still trying to get to grandma's house, but different setting. It is a black little girl instead. So hopefully I want to try to make more books like that. Tell me when it's out and I will buy a copy for my kids. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> freaks out and eats out of the room. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, well, that'd be really cool. My kids are are a mixed race, so we're always looking for um, alternate characters that aren't just Lily White. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we still have a couple of 
from you our, saw a couple comments. You can I just yeet that and your I shirt. Think, honestly, yeah. Everything. Get us a P.O. box and I'll we'll send you a little care package. PO box. It'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to like cut it off, but it is also like 1 a.m. at the same time. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Not worried about it. Thank you. Thank you. When things um, so, are safe and when things are, and if we are ever on the same side of the country at the same time, we'd love to actually like sit down and talk to you, even if it's just over lunch. It doesn't have to be I in a recording studio. I would love that. I really would. You guys have been so wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. It really, I mean, it really did feel like I was just sitting down having drinks with friends. So thank you guys. That's what yeah. I, I want it to feel more of a conversation versus then like, all right, here's another press junket you have to do and you have to answer these questions, the same five freaking questions over and over and over again. So how do you get into voice acting? <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you guys, I did, a, I did an interview um, with a, a pod that I had done an interview for prior uh, for Firewatch, but he is a huge um, Owl House fan. And uh, so we get on and we start talking. It was just, every question was about the Owl House and, and that's fine. But then he was like, he goes, well, I mean, you've kind of peaked now. Like that's it. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just, you're not gonna get any better than this. He's like, I'm gonna you go from here. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, why would you <laughs> say wow. that? The anyway. nerve. So thank you for wow. that. Time, that I peaked. <laughs> what? That's just the audacity of that statement is just fucking wild. Yeah. Oh my I, god. Oh, I'm not normally one to get secondhand embarrassed, but I am like secondhand cringing so hard right now, and I didn't even say it. That was a. Um, I got off that, and I was like, "Well, I guess. Uh, <laughs> guess uh, I guess Jones is done. So thanks for playing." <laughs> Oh my God. Throw in the towel now. That's it's time to retire. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> so that should wrap it up for this episode slash video of the experience point and of the still loading podcast. Uh, Sissy, thank you so much for joining us. This is one of the most fun conversations I've had in a while. Thank you guys so much. It's really been a blast talking with all of you. I really, I'm, I love this. I feel like I've just been sitting down with friends and <laughs> drinking coffee. So thank you. I, I can't tell you how much that, that means to us. <laughs> Um, so where can the people find you online? What, what, and of course, uh, go play call the sea, everyone. It is out now. So, uh, I think it's out on PC, Xbox one, PS4, Xbox, it's Xbox, it's Xbox, it's Xbox. Yep, okay. Xbox, yep. <laughs> yeah. So PC and Xbox. Yep. Yeah. Um, yes, please play call of the sea. It's a really beautiful little game and let me know what you think. Uh, I'm on the Twitters at sissy speaks. It's sissy with a C and, uh, Instagram same. And I'm on Facebook, but I don't really, I'm Facebook isn't really a thing anymore. Is it? So I, I wouldn't use it. <laughs> yeah. That's uh that's, that's where to find me. Otherwise I'm just hopping around talking to people and sitting in this room <laughs> for much of my days. <laughs> And what a time to be alive. Um, yeah, I mean, you can follow us on <laughs> everything at, at the experience point. It's just like it's spelled here in this fancy logo. Uh, it's just at the EXP point. Um, we, you know, cover gaming. Obviously, we do, we're focusing on TV and stuff this time with our wonderful guest. Um, but we have plans to break into tabletop, cosplay, all kinds of stuff. And we're still relatively new. So um, your follows and likes are very much appreciated. So hit that subscribe button. So why don't you smash it. that like button down <laughs> below and hit subscribe. Smash that notification button, bro. I hate myself that I just did that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as usual, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Still Loading Pod on all of them. If you want to email me, you can email me still loading contact at gmail.com. You can go to my website, still loading podcast.com. I keep forgetting to plug this. I actually have a merch store that's up now. Um, I don't remember the link, but I'll put it in the show notes. It's on T Public. You can Google Still Loading Podcast T Public and it's up there. Um, I which will be designing hopefully, a shirt for it soon. <laughs> yes, these. Uh, I just right now it's just a, the the regular podcast logo, but I'm hoping to do something a little bit more unique and fun uh, with the help of Andrew and Driana here. And the most important plug I have is the Bit by Bit Foundation. The Bit by Bit Foundation is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to put video games and video game consoles in the hands of children receiving inpatient care at hospitals. So if you want to help them out and consider donating, please go to bitbybitfoundation.org. And that will do it. So 
thank you all once again for listening. Thank you, Sissy, Andrew, and Gianna for joining me. Thank you so much. I've had such a blast tonight. Me too. <laughs> and I will see you all next time. Bye. On this week's episode slash, well, hold on, let me do that again. <laughs>